Yes, sir, that certainly is right. We'll be there rain or shine because we have a great meeting going on and there's going to be a great speaker tonight, our own Bishop Ed Mother. good yeah 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 good morning Josie hi how's it going good we have a great guest today want to tell us all about him <laughs> He's actually was here. that really your voice <laughs> oh I have all kinds of voices <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> um game show host <laughs> oh yes Tell them what the answer is today, Josie. <laughs> today we have a lovely episode of Up to Your Ears. Yay! Vanessa and who is our awesome guest. Chris Simpson. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. We need one of those. We need one of those things where you hit it and then like people clap like uh the James. Button. Yes. And then one that goes, really Ooh. Noted. you know? No, there'll never be any of those. Yeah, there might be. <laughs> Watch out. All right. So our guest, Chris, he has been in a band called Mineral, which is great. They are... Love. Mineral. They're rocking. Their music is described as like emo, but indie rock. And um, he's just an all around talented guy. If you look him up on Yield YouTube, um, there's lots of videos of him just playing acoustically, which are really beautiful. And um, his lyrics are very thought provoking. And we will get into some of that because there's a very favorite quote um, that he says about vulnerability. Maybe he'll tell us about it more. So let's admit him. He's here. Yes, All right. He's here. Yay. Yay. Hey, Chris. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's been a long time since I've seen you. I know. It has been. I know. I don't even remember the last time I saw you. Me neither. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Nice to meet you. Vanessa, nice Chris. You. Chris, Vanessa. No, but seriously, thank you so much for joining us today and taking time out of probably corralling your children to learn yeah sit down and learn at home it's a constant struggle yeah i bet um but we do have this questionnaire okay that um we ask all of our guests they're they they vary though the questions do vary so they're not exactly the same but um it's fun so don't be afraid okay okay and hopefully not your typical interview where you're like you know, who are your influences, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to be cool. a little more fun. Um, okay. We've named this uh, questionnaire Truth or Protect Your Rep. So fully allowed to lie if you want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a fun guessing game for your friends when they see it. Um, but one of the questions that we really like to ask is when you were growing up, what was your favorite cartoon? Ooh, uh, I was a big Scooby-Doo guy. I loved that. I also really loved uh, Grape Ape. Do you remember that? Ooh, yes. I liked the, the big purple ape. Um, I loved him. Uh, Didn't he go around like on a skateboard or something? Yeah, I have trouble remembering exactly what he did, but he was always on some kind of adventure. Um, yeah. Yeah, he definitely had a skateboard. Um, yeah, uh, I also really got into uh, like He-Man, Masters of the Universe. I was really into that for a while. It was a great cartoon. I liked He-Man too. Oh, here's a trivia question. He-Man had Battle Cat, right? Mm -hmm. As his, do you know what Battle Cat's name was when he wasn't Battle Cat, when he was just like the prince's like sidekick? Oh, I won't remember that, but I know what my you're brother. About. My brother asked me this the other day. This is the only reason I know because he was obsessed with He-Man because I asked him this question. It's Cringer. 
Cringer, that's oh, right. I remember that. I remember yeah. it as soon as you said it, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Isn't that funny? Um, okay, first question that I have for you, Chris. Um, you're going to a party. It's a potluck. What's your signature dish? What are you bringing to the party? Bag of chips. I don't know. Something, <laughs> I, can, something I can pick up at the store <laughs> that I don't have to make. <laughs> All right. All right. Next question for you. Um, I read a few different articles and such that you participated in some interviews and whatever. And you had a really beautiful quote about um, finding strength and vulnerability that really kind of struck me. And so that led me to think that you probably read a lot. So I was going to ask you, um, what the last book you read was and what drew you to it. So right now I'm reading, uh, attempting to read uh, a very large book called uh, The Path of Individual Liberation. It's like Chogyam Trungpa. It's, uh, it's kind of like distilling this entire like Buddhist lineage of, of thought based on all these seminars he gave. So I read a lot of like uh, kind of Eastern philosophy, religion, I consider myself, I don't consider myself, I, I guess I consider myself spiritual, like in the sense that everything feels kind of spiritual to me, but, um, but I don't, I don't have like a specific religion or practice, but, uh, but I do really enjoy reading a lot of that. I can read that sort of stuff a lot. It's, yeah. it's whether or not I am capable of like enacting mm -hmm. the things that talks about in my life. Like, I mean, I don't know, but, uh, right. But I find it very interesting and fascinating and sort of like soothing to read. I also notoriously have like uh, a stack of books on my bedside table. So I'm like constantly, I feel like I'm reading like five books at once usually. Um, all right, my next question for you. Chris, you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, in your career, who have you been most excited to meet? I had the opportunity just a couple of years ago to meet Neil Young. Oh, wow. uh, which was super cool. Like the sort of thing that get, it takes a lot to get me out of the house, you know? Um, I got an invitation from a friend to go see uh, during South by Southwest film a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, um, this Neil Young movie. And this friend of mine who invited me is friends with uh, Daryl Hannah, who uh, Neil Young has been dating. Um, and so he's Daryl like, Hannah, like from Splash Daryl yes. Hannah? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Anyway, see, he invited me with the like caveat that like probably a good opportunity, a good chance we'll get invited to hang out afterwards and might get to meet Neil Young. So I'm like, okay, I can get out of the house for that. Um, uh, and it was cool. It was awesome. Make an exception. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was he, um, was he just as cool as everyone? Just like, so sweet and down to earth and yeah, yeah. like yeah, exactly what you would imagine, yeah. I understand that you are working on um, a new project, correct? You have been for a couple of years? Yes, uh, we're referring to Mountain Time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so really since, you know, I was in Mineral and then the Gloria record, the Gloria record ended uh, probably 2003. And really since shortly after that, I've been doing, uh, I was calling it Zookeeper and have a couple records out under that name from the like mid 2000s. Um, and, and to me, Mountain Time was just kind of a nominal change from that. It's kind of the same vibe and body of work to me. Um, so yeah, since then I've been doing that and Right now I'm actually involved in like so many things, which is kind of exciting. Like we've been reissuing some Gloria record stuff. And so I've been really involved in like getting stuff remastered and the kind of administrative work of, of that. And we also have a, uh, before the Gloria record disbanded in 2003, we, in 2002, we started to make another full length, which was just sort of abandoned um, at the time when we, when the band dissolved. Uh, so there's a whole, full length worth of stuff there that never got finished. And particularly like most of the music is kind of there. It was particularly like, I didn't put write any vocals or lyrics for it. So I've been working with that stuff again, hoping to 
kind of get that finished and out uh, at some point and been reissuing uh, in the midst of like putting together reissues for and remasters of the Zookeeper records that came out, um, which I feel like really fell through the cracks. It was like 2006, 2007, like this weird gap of time between uh, like the music and the record industry had sort of died already, but it was kind of before like social media and like all these kind of new ways Mm -hmm. of marketing music were really there. So I feel like, yeah, even a lot of my friends like haven't heard those records. Um, So I've just recently been getting those remastered and they're gonna be coming out on vinyl for the first time. Um, And also working on like, in 2004, 2005, I recorded, I wrote uh, probably like 40 songs uh, when I started this Zookeeper Mountain Time thing and uh, filled up like 14 reels of two inch tape at the studio and you know, really, uh, really haven't gone back to that stuff. Um, and a lot of the songs on the Mountain Time record that came out last year were songs that were written back then that I kind of like redid now. Um, but I've been going through, I finally got all these reels of tape digitized. And so I've been going through with a couple of the, my kind of key collaborators from back then and uh, kind of putting to, we're putting together another full length record worth of like unreleased stuff from that era, like stuff that never came out. Um, and so that's- Under Mountain Time? Mm-hmm. It'll all come out under Mountain Time. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, so I've, it's cool. Like I feel like I have so many projects uh, in the works simultaneously right now, which is fun. Um, so I've never had that in the past. I've always been the sort of person who's like, I can only do one thing at a time creatively and I don't want to take my focus away from that because I fear it won't get done or something. But, you know, really it resulted in, you know, I just spend like, because I don't release records that often, like it ends up meaning I spend like five to seven years just obsessing over one like set of songs and one record mm-hmm. Um, and so now it's kind of fun to like, I feel like I'm operating from a different mindset now, more of an abundance mindset. Like I can do it all, you know, like I don't have to choose one thing, just one thing to focus on. So, uh, it's been fun to like, try to be doing a lot of different things at once, you know? Yeah. And I, um, I've noticed, I, I watched one of the videos from the last map or the new mountain time record. Um, And it looks like you've been that you've been collaborating with a lot of fun people. Because when I first watched the video, I was like, in the beginning, I was like, was that Tim Kasher? And I was like, wait a second. And then I thought I lost my mind. So then I watched the rest of it. I'm like, is that Ted? Is that Tim again? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Tim made that, that. Re- Tim made that video. I, I saw that at the very end. And how fun was that to be able to like collaborate and work on a, like a visual. I know that Tim's been into Tim from cursive has been into um, film and stuff for quite a while, but I didn't know that he directed this um, video for you. And that's so cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Like Tim is one of my favorite people on the planet and like we don't get to spend a lot of time together like not living in the same town um but it was a really cool uh collaboration tim was the the first person that came to mind so i i just like sent him the record as soon as i finished it and asked him like if he would want to make a video for a song from it and he was excited about it so it was fun i was just gonna say i did notice in the video i couldn't it looked like you were at the beach in the mountains. Um, you're on a train. Like, was this filmed from one side of the country to the other? What's What's cool is he. We had this initial concept, uh, which he was going to film because he's in LA now. Um, which he was going to film, and he had gotten like people involved in LA, and then mm-hmm. we just ran out of time, and he had a cursive tour coming up. So he's like, once he realized he wasn't going to get it done before the tour. Uh, he was like, well, why don't I like retool the idea and I make something that come up with a concept that we can do on tour. And um, it was actually kind of cool because uh, the girl Jess, who's like the main protagonist in it, mm-hmm. like the street preacher um, from this band Camp Dogs from Chicago that's on Cursive's label. Um, Tim years ago asked me 
he just called me like day of when he was coming to Austin to do a, he was doing living room shows. Um, and he said, Hey, I'm going to be in town tonight. And I have this crazy idea. I don't know if you'd be up for it, but I'm trying to make a video for this band camp dogs on our label. And I wondered if you would be in the video and like, I have this idea for how it would go. And so I, uh, you know, acted and just acted in this video for camp dogs. Um, and so when Tim realized he was going to have to make this video for me on tour, he was like, well, what's awesome is that Jess is going to be on this tour. And I was thinking it'd be really cool if she was like acted in your video, like you acted in her video, you know? Um, so it just worked out. And then like all the cursive <laughs> guys were around and like were involved and everyone was like, you know, excited to like have a little something to do during the day on tour. Cause it's, you know, it can be kind of boring during the day on tour. So it's like, yeah, what are we doing today? We're filming another scene for the video, you know, like. That's so fun. I love that. Yeah. And it turned out great. I love it. Okay. Here's a question for you. Okay. If um, Mountain Time were to go on the road tomorrow, um, it's safe out there in this pretend land, pretend world. Um, who are you bringing on tour? What does the bill look like? Mountain Time oh. and two other bands that you're touring the U.S. with. Okay. Um, hmm. Interesting. And they don't have to be alive. It could be any any bands. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think I would love to go... That is such an interesting question. Um, so there's a band from Pennsylvania called The Innocence Mission. Anyways, they they were this kind of ethereal, like uh, there was a lot of synths and like affected guitars, but like beautiful female singer and um, have since kind of like moved away. They had like three records on major labels. And then like since then, since probably the mid to late nineties and they have been making, it's just exquisite like little folk records. Um, mm -hmm for a decade and there's probably like seven or eight records now uh, over the last decade that wow. I love, I love so much and they never tour. Like it's, it would be a really cool deal for them to tour. So I would want to tour with them. I would like to bring them. Yeah. Who else? Hmm. I, uh, I don't know. Um, I would always want to find someone new and young and unknown that nobody had heard before. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know who that is right now. Um, Bring them on the world. Yeah. Not that, you know, like that many people are coming to me, but in this, in this version of reality, yeah. Mm -hmm. There would be a lot of people there, of course. It'd be very large that, arenas. Every show, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it would be an opportunity to expose the world to someone new and small and beautiful. That's awesome. So you have this new, small, beautiful, no one's heard of person or project. And then you also have this project that's been around the Innocence Mission. Is that the name? Mm -hmm. They've been around for a long time, but they never tour. So actually, no one really knows who they are either. Yeah. I've never even heard, I've never heard of them. And it's, it's, I mean, it's not crazy, but I can't believe that they've put out three records on on a major label. Yeah, and, like, you know, they were on a major label oh. back in the, yeah, like early to late 90s, probably. They put out three records on major labels. Um, and, you know, I don't know that they ever had any huge hits or anything. Uh, they had a song called Bright Is Yellow that was in that Empire Records. soundtrack I remember that movie okay uh, so I think they sound really familiar to me I couldn't name any of their songs but they um that's not a new name to me so yeah yeah they've definitely been around it's but yeah they've they've kind of largely gone to just making records on their own and I, like they often end up released on different labels so like it's not like they have like one label like pushing uh -huh. them you know? um but yeah I, I love 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 those records and awesome um, yeah. Um, my last question for you, um, Chris, is what is the, cr the strangest place, venue, or place, show that you've ever played? Uh, we played once with the Glory Record in uh, 
Ottawa in Canada in a uh, like elementary school classroom. It was just huh. some, like, we didn't really know. I don't know. I still am a little confused about what this place was that we played, but like it was, you know, it was like a, a legit promoter who had set it up and there were people there, but it was like we showed up and we're on the campus of this school and like we got shown to this like <laughs> classroom, you know, where we set up to play and people showed up and it was, it felt like a normal show in every other way. It was just like so bizarre, like looking around and seeing like maps on the wall and, you know, it was, <laughs> It was oh, really weird. bizarre. Traumatizing. <laughs> You're like, what What am I doing back here? <laughs> this is a bad dream. Yes. I swear it I passed that test. <laughs> when can we expect any new releases? Do you have any dates for like the new Mountain Time project record? So the, the, re, uh, the reissues of the Zookeeper records will probably be out like summer, late summer, uh in that area and then yeah from that point on i'm hoping that stuff will just kind of keep coming out like i just have so many things i'm working on and like trying to like meet dates to like send things off to manufacturing and uh so but, but i'm really hoping and trying to set it up to where like you know starting like late summer uh hopefully that stuff will just be a lot of stuff will be coming out like every you know, handful of months for a while. That's awesome. And when you say coming out, are you um, releasing everything on vinyl or is it vinyl and digital or? Yeah, it's like vinyl and digital. Cool. Just because vinyl has become so popular that yeah. so many, a lot more people have like opened up plants and uh, there's a lot smaller plants, you know, like there used to be like two or three big ones and you had to get on their wait list because they were the only people who could do it, you know, and now there's a lot of smaller places. Um, that do it and do it well, you know, yeah. so. Uh, well, yeah, and congratulations like because I did actually try to go and buy the Mountain Time record and it's totally sold out. I know. I'm hoping that we'll <laughs> get, I'm hoping we'll get to, you know, as some of these additional ones are coming out, we'll get the chance to like do another run of, uh, of those. Yeah, that's right. And you were doing some fun. It looked like you were doing some um, super fun, like colored vinyl. Mm -hmm. green and something and i don't know like that's yeah. fun. just to like design I, i'm obsessed with colored vinyl so what's I funny is uh i am largely like i'm uh new to the whole colored vinyl thing like most records i own are on black vinyl you know it's just like <laughs> vinyl you know i didn't know yeah. there were all these colors but um the guy at the label that has been putting the stuff out spartan records out of seattle is uh obsessed with like colored vinyl and vinyl variants. And he has like a specific guy he works with who helps him design these really elaborate like vinyl colors and stuff. So it's kind of his thing, but it's beautiful. Like I've, I've really been appreciating it and, and happy to work with someone who has that sort of creative uh, idea and interest, you know? Yeah, well, we'll be on the lookout for the next release of uh, now it'll be like the second pressing. Thanks a lot, Chris. Now we have to get the second pressing of Mountain Time. Right? Not going to be worth as much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seriously, and it probably won't even be colored vinyl. Well, maybe it will. I know. Because, yeah, it might have to be on boring so black cool, vinyl. I Dang feel it. like that's something that really has sprung out of this period of time where um, people have been forced to wait, which is um something that people are not used to doing you know every once everything was available just click now you know swipe here um i think we lost some things and we're getting some of those back where i feel like people are really valuing the experience of opening up a record and caring about the artwork and reading the liner notes and having that be an experience in and of itself and not just so anxious to consume that one song and then move on. Um, it's more time and effort invested in what someone else has invested time and effort into. I think it's kind of a cool, beautiful cycle. Yeah, yeah. it's a whole experience, I, right? I totally agree. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I hope that continues. For sure. Well, um, yeah, 
we look forward to everything you're doing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chris. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad that everyone's still doing what we're doing and just getting rec music out there. And, you know, we still have our stereos. We can put the record on. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks so much. It was really nice great to meet you, Vanessa. You and chat with you. And thank you for sharing your time with us. No problem. Bye. Until next time. Bye. So wonderful to talk to Chris Simpson of Mineral, Mountain Time, Zookeeper, so many projects. And it sounds like he has a lot of new things coming down for us, some remastered and some new. I'm really excited to yeah. hear it all. We will include links in the description. So please check them out. Um, absolutely. And I am so excited to hear all of his new stuff too. If you have not heard of Chris Simpson or any of his projects, definitely check him out. Um, just such a huge talent and what a nice guy. Makes, it, makes him even cooler. I think I can definitely say that all of our gifts have been thoughtful and kind and wonderful individuals. And I hope that everyone enjoys getting to know these people a little bit better. There's so much beauty and creativity left in this world. Let's embrace it all. If you Absolutely. like these videos, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. A little music fairy gets their wings and um, it just puts our videos in our, in your recommended so that when you do log on to YouTube to look up your latest cooking tutorial or whatever, um, our videos come up in the recommended. Um, I'm Josie and this is Vanessa and this is up to your ears. And it sounds good. Thanks for being here guys.